the SMBG procedures we do and our patients do very regularly. Uh, let us see what are the problems with this procedure. And this SMGG is usually done by glucometers and the errors usually arise because of the uh, wrong use of glucometers. And then there are some inherent problems with the technologies which are uh, used in, in measuring the glucose in glucometers. Now, this is a very good, uh, uh, I, I'll say, uh, the, the, the a way to find out patients glucose and it is very helpful in deciding day-to-day -day treatment and also the diet of the patient so it's a point of care and real-time glucose can be estimated it's very handy portable and easy to use can be used by the patient and can also be used by nursing staff and results are immediately available and very small amount of blood is needed Patient can use it at home, at work, or while he's traveling at any point of time, right, right in the morning or in the night or in the day. And these readings are usually stored in the glucometers with time, with date, and also with relation to meal. And they can be rechecked by the patient as well as uh, by the doctor so that the treatment can be better tailored for that particular patient. It's very useful in timely diagnosis of hypoglycemia and also for the hyperglycemia hyperglycemic emergencies. It's a screening tool for epidemiological studies. Remember that uh, glucometers are not recommended to make the diagnosis of diabetes because of the inherent uh, problems of uh, having some variation in the glucose results. And uh, it has acceptable accuracy. I'll again repeat, it's acceptable. It's no, they are not absolutely accurate, but they have an acceptable accuracy and good correlation with venous plasma glucose which is estimated in lab and remember that uh, the lab reports are supposed to be the gold standard there we want uh, uh, the procedure to be done under very very controlled uh, way and also we uh, let the reaction go to the end point and we have incubation period and so we actually are measuring glucose level in a given sample much more accurately in the, in the laboratory as compared to point of care uh, measurement done by the glucometers in home or in the, in the even in the hospitals. Now we know that manufacturers of glucometers they claim that there uh, is a very good uh, accuracy of their products but the clinical experience we see day in and day out is uh, very different. I'll just elaborate it by a case. Uh, this is a case uh, of a 16 year old girl who was a known type 1 diabetic for last four years and brought to our OPD with complaints of abdominal pain, vomiting and not feeling well. And she was highly stressed because of ongoing class 10th examination and on glucometer, the parents told that uh, they have recently checked the glucose level. It was 256. And patients say that this is very useful for having uh, glucose levels of uh, around 200 many times uh, in the in, in last few days, and there is not not a worrisome label for them. The parents also insist that uh, patient be treated for abdominal pain and vomiting, and so she can be brought uh, home and can appear in the ongoing examination and will not miss the examination paper. But we insisted for lab glucose and uh, we found that the lab glucose was 428 and urine acetone was strongly present. Patient was to be hospitalized and treated for the DK and uh, <coughs> uh, she definitely missed her examination. Now, let us see what is the accuracy level recommended for glucometer readings uh, uh, by FDA. We know that uh, glucometers which are used in hospital, they have some different uh, levels of accuracy which should be followed and they are slightly stricter. But uh, in personal use glucometers, which we are more concerned, which are used for SMBG examination, uh, FDA says that 95% of readings done by glucometer should fall in plus to minus 1500 uh, from the reference or the, the lab glucose values. So that means there is a, a good variation of 30% which can happen in the readings uh, between the lab reading and the, the, uh, the glucometer reading. And FDA also says that 99% values should be within 20% up or down from the reference value. Now, FDA says that uh, Stricter criteria would increase the cost of the test, will also need more amount of blood, 
and will also take more time to for reporting and so these are the slightly liberal type of uh, parameters which have been fixed for the glucometer manufacturers that uh, they should follow and the fallacy is that uh, if you have a reference value of 60 mg uh, a FDA approved glucometer can read it uh, from 45 to 75 milligram per deciliter. And if the reference value is 200 milligram per de de deciliter in the laboratory, then FDA approved glucometer can read it from 160 to 240. And remember that these criteria will fit on 95% times. And so there are at least 5% results which will be worse than these criteria and uh, we do not know what happens to these five percent uh, because it, they are very very erroneous maybe very high maybe very low than the reference value now hospital patients uh, story is entirely different uh, they are sick patient many times dehydrated maybe in shock maybe on hypoxic we have seen lot many patients uh, during the covid era who were hospitalized with hypoxic conditions they were also on oxygen they have different hematocrits and we'll see in the next slides how the hematocrit uh, produces a difference in the readings and not known at the time of uh, testing we do not know the hematocrit many times and take multiple drugs also now we know many drugs can interfere with the glucometer readings and they may be having glucose values which are very rapidly changing uh, so and they may be tested by different people on different meters and so these readings may be unreliable many a times now let us see what are the methodologies used in the glucometers and the glucometer can measure uh, cannot measure the glucose directly but we need some enzyme which reacts with the glucose and then can produce a change in the uh, uh, color of an indicator or can produce a small amount of voltage which can be measured by the uh, glucometer now these enzymes provide specificity for the glucose but remember in spite of having very very specific reaction with the glucose they may also have interference with certain other substances now two different enzymes are used for glucometer um, uh, for the glucometer strips one is glucose oxidase and second is glucose dehydrogenase and glucose uh, in the blood reacts with the enzyme glucose oxidase or glucose dehydrogenase, uh, dehydrogenase on the strip of the pad the reaction produces an electrical current which is uh, which are the glucometers most modern glucometers are now electrochemistry based uh, so they are producing a small amount of current when the reaction between the enzyme and the glucose take place or changes the color of an indicator uh, proportionate to the glucose concentration in the blood now these enzymatic reactions like all enzymatic reactions are very susceptible to oxygen concentration the temperature the drugs the ph and also the interfering chemicals present in the blood the enzymes and the reagents on the strip pad may deteriorate with the exposure to humidity heat dust uh, with time so it's very very important that uh, the strips should be properly stored expiry date of open bottle may be different from the unopened one now you can see many many manufacturers clearly mention that once the bottle is opened the strip should be consumed within one month and so what happens is patients keep using those strips and they make give erroneous results many glucometers require calibration chip or the code with each new bottle non adherence to this code uh, and the uh, calibration can produce fallacious report now what happens is that uh, uh, you have every time a new bottle of strips there is a calibrator coming with it which should be inserted in the uh, glucometer now we have many glucometer manufacturers which are also having non coding glucometers now this is uh, how you apply blood on the strip and it changes color of the indicator and light is thrown from the source and it is read on the uh, signal detector and this is the colorimeter or the reflectance meter uh, photometers which are uh, still not prevalent but we are very frequently used few years back and this is uh, the electrochemistry based meters the blood is supplied on the strip and uh, then strip uh, produces some degree of uh, electrical current which uh, actually makes the glucometer to read the amount of current which is proportionate to the, the uh, amount of uh, glucose present in the uh, sample. And these are the differences. Uh, the electrochemistry meters, they are smaller and they can give results very fast. Now we have glucometers which can give results in 
फाइव सेकेंड टेन सेकेंड फिफ्टीन सेकेंड एंड टेस्ट ट्रिप्स आर मोर कॉम्प्लेक्स इन डिजाइन एंड दे आर ऑल्सो मोर कॉस्टली बट रिक्वायर वेरी स्मॉल अमाउंट ऑफ ब्लड नाउ ग्लूकोमीटर्स विल रिक्वायर जस्ट फाइव टू फिफ्टीन माइक्रोलीटर्स ऑफ द ब्लड which is a very small tiny drop and so it's easier for the patient to prick himself and these glucometers are perceived newer and they are definitely newer than the electrophotochemistry but they are definitely not uh, as accurate as uh, the photometry glucometers were the photometry glucometer the reflectance photometry glucometers they require a larger instrument they are slower usually the 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 readings come in 30 seconds 45 seconds and in the older ones it is to be 60 seconds also the step strips are very simple but require larger now here you require something like 50 to 100 microliter of blood a sort of a hanging drop of the blood is required and so the patient had to make a uh, more painful uh, prick to get that much of blood and time also required was uh, very high that is usually glucometer will take uh, some time like 45 seconds uh, to give you the report and but they are time tested and proven quality glucometers <clears throat> now the glucometers uh, now we should remember that the glucometers uh, they use whole blood and then this value is extrapolated to serum plasma glucose uh, the the plasma glucose value assuming the the hematocrit is normal now blood has a liquid component which contains glucose and blood has a cellular component predominantly rbc in the rbc fluid contains much less glucose as compared to the fluid part of the plasma part of the uh, blood and so the whole blood values are usually 10% lower than the uh, uh, the the serum or the glucose uh, seen in the plasma and but the modern glucometers what they do they use a mathematical algorithm to increase the uh, glucose value to the uh, plasma glucose value but they assume that the hematocrit is normal now a person who has a low hematocrit may have more plasma and so may have a higher glucose value and so we should remember that this makes an erroneous report glucometers uh, use capillary whole blood values are different from the venous uh, especially in the post prandial now we know that the blood when it starts in the arterial compartment from the heart carries much higher level of glucose in capillary some amount of glucose is extracted and veins the there still less amount of glucose reaches because most of it has been extracted in the capillaries so what happens is that uh, the the glucose values in capillary is uh, definitely higher than the values seen in the venous side of the blood and this this uh, variation is much higher in the post prandial state in fasting state it's a negligible difference but in post prandial state the the difference is much much higher and so we should remember that the capillary glucose values will be uh, slightly higher than the the venous glucose values particularly in the post prandial state lab is usually using an end point reaction while the glucometer read ongoing reaction at a pre prescribed time Now, it's very important that when you are using the reflectance meter, the the reaction is going on. The color is changing to darker and darker. But you have pre-specified that after thirty seconds you will read the reading. But what happens is that in laboratory you allow the incubation period of say thirty minutes, forty minutes, and so the the fastest color has already developed, and so chances of error are much less. Now, contaminated skin site puncture. or dilution of blood sample by the antiseptic solution can also lead to paralysis very small amount of blood is needed and if you have applied some antiseptic solution and you not allowed it to dry up and then puncture it it may get diluted by the that solution and similarly if the skin contains some contaminations like glucose uh, some food juices or even fruits or even milk which contains galactose may can produce large differences because very tiny amount of blood is needed for the glucometer now gdh based glucometers that is glucose uh, dehydrogenase based glucometer measure glucose more accurately but simultaneously they have more interference with the drugs and chemicals now this is we have already discussed that the capillary glucose values in fasting are nearly equal or slightly less than the venous glucose but the post prandial values there is a higher difference it may be 20 to 70 mg 
depending on the patient's response to endogenous or exogenous insulin, how much glucose is extracted in the capillaries before it goes to the venous side. And should remember that this plasma uh, glucose values are 10% higher than the blood glucose values on the uh, in the uh, uh, whole blood. And then modern glucometer extrapolate the capillary whole blood glucose values to venous uh, glucose values by a mathematical algorithm, but it assumes that the hematocrit is normal. Again, going to a case, Mr. DS, known case of type 2 diabetes for 10 years, was recently prescribed insulin. One day early morning, he felt uh, uneasy, nervous and sweaty. He immediately recognized he's going into hypoglycemia, checked uh, glucose by glucometer, it was 55. He immediately took out glucose tablets from the strip and chewed them. After 15 minutes, he rechecked blood glucose and it was found uh, that glucose value is 302, but he just forgot to wash his hand. His hand was already contaminated by the glucose tablets. And so what happened was that the glucose levels came very high, assuming that a uh, patient has recovered. He has recovered and there is no need to take further meal. He did not take a meal of further glucose. And then within half an hour, he slipped into hypoglycemia. Now, see that 302 was an erroneous report because of contamination of glucose, which he took out uh, from the strip and was still adhering to his uh, fingers. Now, these are very important slides. You can see that exposure of uh, strips to a higher degree of temperature decreases uh, the glucose values both in glu GO and GDH uh, glucometers. Uh, exposure of strips to decreased temperature will increase. And so we keep seeing patients who say that, uh, uh, doctor, in summers, I don't know why my glucose levels are well controlled, but in winters, they are not well controlled. We can immediately find out that the, what is the reason. Exposure of strips to humidity, vibration, dirt can also deteriorate the results. Outdated strips, again, failure of cal to calibrate can also. But here, see, failure to dry hands, this can increase or decrease. Failure to adequately put a drop on the, uh, that the whole strip pad is not covered by the blood, again, will produce reduced readings. And anemia, all anemic patients will have higher plasma compartment as compared to cellular compartment. And so in anemia, the glucometer readings will be higher and the polycythemia, they will be lower. High altitude, there is some degree of hypoxia. The glucose oxidase meter may show higher readings. Ambient temperature, if it is very high, uh, they, they suppose in, in summers when temperature is nearing 40 degrees, the glucometers will show a decreased reading both in uh, glucose oxidase and dehydrogenase glucometers. Ambient temperature, if it is less than 10 degree, it will show a higher value. Postpendial state, we already said that capillary glucose values are uh, higher than the venous glucose values. And you can also see the diabetic ketoacidosis and severe acidosis will give rise to lower glucose values, both in glucose oxidase and dehydrogen. And this is what we discussed in our first case that the values seen in the glucometer was much lower as compared to the values which were found on the lab readings. And uh, there are many compounds like maltose, uh, xylose, galactose is again is a part of milk. They can also produce uh, changes uh, to higher glucose values in glucose dehydrogenase. Ascorbic acid can also produce increase in the uh, glucose value in dehydrogenase uh, method glucose dehydrogenase X. Now, the paracetamol, acetaminophen, can produce a decreased value in glucose oxidase glucometers and can produce an increased value in dehydrogenase glucometer. Dopamine, patients hospitalized maybe on dopamine can produce reduced value. And mannitol can produce, glucose oxidase meter will produce higher readings. So these are many, many things which uh, can interfere and produce a reading which may not uh, concurrent with the lab readings. And when you I combine all of them, you can see that uh, many patients, may have many co-founders uh, may produce much, much varied results. Now, how can we avoid these fallacies? It's only by uh, training the patient and the staff. Use only the strips listed in the manufacturer for your device. Now, this is very important. Every manufacturer has two, three models of the glucometer, and every model has a different strip. Many patients, uh, they keep using strips from other model to the other uh, glucometer and can get erroneous reports. 
Every time you start uh, to use a new box of strip, make sure that you calibrate uh, the glucometer. Now we know that non-coding glucometers are available. Check the strips uh, for, uh, for, for the expiry date also. Make sure that the lid of the glucometer strip bottle is tightly closed immediately after you take out the strip. Don't store the strips in fridge. Now, many patients keep the, the, the uh, assuming that this uh, expiry date will be extended by keeping them in there, but this will produce erroneous result. Make sure to wash and dry your hands before you test. That's very important. There are so many contaminations present in the, in the uh, household uh, uh, utensils and other things which can produce higher result. Do not squeeze the finger when you are taking blood job because if you squeeze, you are taking out the tissue fluid more than the blood and this will definitely produce a reduced reading. Don't ignore any symptom even if you obtain a normal glucose reading. Now this again is very important. If you have symptoms, your reading still do not show that hypoglycemia, that doesn't mean you do not have hypoglycemia immediately do some corrective measure and also send the sample to the lab. Train the patient not to avoid glucometer checking after a dietary indiscretion. This is very, very common in self glucose monitoring. Patients try to uh, avoid whenever they have taken some sweets and this will produce a very uh, uh, erroneous uh, or it, it will be uh, my doctor will be scolding me why you have got this thing done. So they avoid when they know that the glucose is likely to come more. Rather, they should learn that what uh, they have done wrong can produce high glucose values and they should avoid this, this thing. So take home message, SMBG measurement by glucometer has become an integral part of diabetes management and it's very, very useful. Modern glucometers are accurate to large extent, but the fallacies are also very common. Fallacies may be due to faulty use of device or maybe because and may be avoided by patient and staff training and education. Fallacies are also due to limitations in the technologies used in the glucometer and this uh, cannot be helped by us and the FDA also allows some 10 to 15 percent error up or down from the reference uh, in, and so the glucometer readings may be up and down by 15 percent even in FDA approved glucometer. In critically ill patients or whenever in doubt you should always cross check the glucometer readings with the lab readings. So thank you very much. I think uh, I made things uh, easier for you to understand. Thank you. And thank you again, Harmon India, for giving me this opportunity. Thank you.